Hello and welcome to my video series on Adobe Fireworks CS5. These videos are intended to give you an overview of the different tools you will be using inside of Adobe Fireworks to create different kinds of web graphics and eventually layouts. The next set of videos that are going to be published will use the skills that you learn in this series to create um, different kinds of web layouts. Well, Fireworks is actually one of three graphic software packages published by Adobe, the other two being Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. And understand how each one of these products fits into the big picture and solves a unique problem, we need to understand a little bit about the different types of graphics that exist in the computer world. The two types of images that um, we deal with are um, usually called raster or bitmap images, or the second kind are called uh, vector images. And sometimes these images are referred to as paint type images for raster graphics, or draw type images for uh, vector graphics. Raster images are basically collections of colored dots called pixels, and each dot in the image has a particular color value and a particular transparency or opacity value. A photograph is an example of a typographic that's usually stored in a raster or a bitmap format. Now, vector images aren't um, just collections of pixels. They're basically mathematical representations of an object. For example, um, a line would be an example of a simple vector type object. And you can determine the properties of a line by plotting its starting point on an XY axis and then setting the angle and the length of the line, as well as the color value, the thickness, and the opacity and style for the line and when you add all those up you'll get the line. So that's an example of a uh, vector graphic. In practice what this means is that when you are resizing raster images oftentimes if you resize them down they'll become very dark or very cloudy and if you resize them to make them larger oftentimes uh, raster images or bitmap type images become very pixelated and uh, blurry. So raster images don't resize very well. But because vector objects are basically mathematical models of a particular visual image, when you resize the image you don't lose any resolution. It's just changing the scale of the mathematical model. So if you have a piece of clip art that you want to resize to different dimensions, it's usually best to create that and save that as a vector object. Now, some popular formats for vector type objects are going to be some formats that we work with a lot on the web. For example, GIF images and JPEG images are examples of raster or bitmap type files. You may have also heard of a BMP image, that's another um, format for uh, raster or bitmap images. And then finally there's a very high resolution raster um, image format called a TIFF file. And a lot of times you get those from scanning programs and whatnot. Some popular formats for um, vector images would be the EPS or encapsulated postscript format or the SGV, scalable graphic, uh, scalable vector graphic format. Now all three of the different uh, programs inside of the Adobe um, suite have their own native format as well. Photoshop saves its files in a document called a PSD file. Adobe Illustrator saves its files in a .ai file, and Fireworks uses a format called .png. So these are the native formats for each one of these images. And whenever you want to work with the image or make any modifications or changes, you're always going to want to go back to that source image so that you can have all the detail that you need to, um, and all the features that you need to make corrections in that image. And then once you're finished with that image, you're going to actually export it as a GIF or a JPEG file. So you're actually going to have two different copies of every image that you work with inside of any of these graphic programs. You're going to have the native file of the image, and then you're going to have the exported version that you can actually use on um, your website. 
Now, some people also use PNG files directly on their site. And the only problem with this is that when somebody goes and visits your site with an older browser, let's say Internet Explorer 6, they won't be able to see that image. It'll show up as that white box with the red X in the upper left-hand corner. So for right now, it really isn't safe to um, use PNG files directly on your website unless you're very sure that the uh, that your visitors are going to have an up-to-date um, version of a browser on their um, computer. Now, one of the advantages that GIF files and, J and uh, PNG files have is that they allow you to have transparent backgrounds on the image. And this is something JPEG images cannot do. So if you want any kind of transparency on your images, you're going to have to save those as either a GIF file or as a PNG file and use that. The downside to GIF files are that they're very low resolution files, which means that they're not really suited for very complex images or things like photographs. They have a very low color resolution. The downside on the PNG file isn't the resolution. That's very high. The downside on the PNG file is that the files tend to be much larger than their GIF or JPEG counterparts. So therefore, it's going to take your visitors longer to download the images and see uh, the actual page. JPEG, for most uses, is a nice compromise in between the two. It's got a reasonably small file size and a reasonably high level of resolution. So people like using um, JPEGs at one level um, or another. Um, for any kind of complex image um, on their computer. And you should save uh, GIF files for simpler objects like um, line art and things like that. That will um, come in better. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and look at the main Fireworks window you can see here, and we're going to see the different tools and um, controls that you can access.